Okay, so uh, you've been, if you've been following the demos already, you will have had an overview. Um, you'll understand a bit more of the high level architecture of Jenkins X3, and you'll have a cluster already been set up um, and installed. We're using GCP uh, for this walkthrough, but others work as well. Um, now this guide is focusing around TLS and DNS. Now, a lot of applications, a lot of interactions with, uh, uh, with clusters in the cloud actually deal with web traffic as well. So you want to have secure web, tra use web traffic using TLS. To be able to have um, a TLS, we want to be able to provision ourselves with a wildcard certificate, ideally. Um, and that requires you own a domain as well. So we want to set up automated TLS and DNS in this guide. And we're gonna use two open source projects to be able to do that. Cert Manager from Jetstack and external DNS as well. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and skip over to the website. This is the, uh, under the admin guides for V3, TLS and DNS. Um, we're gonna have, um, there is a couple of prerequisites that we're gonna need so that you own the domain. Let's go ahead and you can have uh, domains. Um, I've got a domain that's already been set up, but you could use GoDaddy, whatever your uh, domain provider is. Um, we've got a couple here, so okay, we're gonna use this one here. Um, one of the, if we go back to the docs, for this prerequisites, you need to have um, a domain that's actually managed by uh, GCP or Azure or AWS. So in this example, what we actually do is use G Cloud, and we need to add these steps for the other providers. Um, is to be able to pass control of the management of that domain that we've got here and pass it over to GCP. Now, I've already done this in, my, in, in this example, but what you would do is under, uh, under here, under the domain, again, it's similar for other domain um, providers, for the, we can go down to DNS and we can see that we've got these name servers where that's a result of running, getting the record list from the name servers. That tells GCP that you can actually, that it can um, manage that domain. So once we've done that prerequisite, um, we can have, it's quite common to be able to have um, in this example, okay, a foo.com. So this is actually your main website. Other places might want to have, um, if they've got multiple clusters set up, you might have a dev.foo.com or a stagingfoo.com. So in this scenario, this is called the Apex domain. And then we've also got our subdomain, which is the dev and the staging in this example. So this demo, this guide we're going to walk through is using both a subdomain and an Apex domain. So we've gone through the prerequisites. Um, now, We've already gone through our admin guide. We've got two repos, the infrastructure repo, and we've got the cluster repo. Cluster repo is responsible for main, uh, managing, all, using GitOps, all the applications in cluster for, uh, that's been created. The infrastructure repo is managed by Terraform. That manages any cloud resource that we've set up. Because we're working with domains, we're actually, there is a bit of both. We need to be able to do, make a change for Terraform to allow it to be able to manage, create a managed zone in GCP. And we've also got a, um, mix, deploy some Helm charts for external DNS and Cert Manager to be able to create A records in, in, for our routing um, for, um, in GCP, as well as yeah, Cert Manager to be able to request a TLS certificate from Let's Encrypt service. And that will automatically enable uh, TLS and DNS in our cluster. Okay, so with that, we've got our cloud, we'll start with our cloud infrastructure. Let's um, go back to our repo and we'll add into, following on from our admin guide, we'll update our values auto Terraform vars and we'll add in the Apex domain. So where are we? It's from the previous guide. We're in our infrastructure repo. We can tell, we can see that we've got our main.tf. It doesn't have the Helm file. Helm files are for your cluster Git repo. Infrastructure repo is main.tf. All right, uh, let's have a look. So following the guide, we're gonna create, add in our Apex domain to the values auto TF. And that is going to be, um, 
we call it? Sorry. This is our Jenkins X Labs. And we're also going to add in a subdomain. You might want to call it dev or um, give it give it something that's a bit clearer. Let's call this WALK for what through. Okay, so we've added in our apex domain and our subdomain. Um, and what we're also going to do is enable our TLS. So let's add in a couple more. There we go. Um, for when we're enabling TLS, you will have automatic renewals of certificates, and that's handled by Cert Manager, which is running in the cluster. Now, if there's any issues, if or if you're coming to um, issues with a the certificate, then you'll actually get an email notification from Let's Encrypt. It's required by Cert Manager to, when requesting a certificate from Let's Encrypt to be able to provide a, a valid email. So let's make sure we do this. Gmail.com. Alrighty. Now we're going to add in, we're going to commit these changes. Enable TLS uh, feature, enable DNS cloud resources. We've already got these set up because we're using the same terminal session as before where I set these. So now we should be able to do telephone plan. Uh, variables, uh, let's put this in quotes. There we go. Let's commit that again. Good, that's better. Okay, this is great because now we can see the resources that are going to be created by Terraform and GCP are going to be, to be able to, uh, it's going to be a managed zone. So we'll actually be able to have a managed zone for the, um, for walk.jenkinsxlabs.com. Okay, so let's apply this. What this is going to do is then when we, um, after we create the infrastru infrastructure via Terraform, um, then we will move on to the cluster and we'll make sure the Helm charts are installed into the cluster using GitOps. Um, and that's just simply just be enabling um, a check. And then the Helm charts for external DNS and Cert Manager will be installed and then have permissions to be able to write the, uh, the records into GCP's um, managed zone so that we can route traffic um, to our endpoints in the cluster. So, do you wanna create these? Yes. Alrighty, okay. Infrastructure changes have been successful. So we can go to GCP, we can actually have a look and we'll be able to see that managed zone for the subdomain being in there. Um, okay, so um, once the Terraform is finished, now this is a slight UX improvement we want to be able to do. Um, normally what we'd like to do is be automatically to have the in-cluster uh, Git repositories, uh, uh, Git operator performing the update, installing the Cert Manager and the um, external DNS Helm charts, but we don't have that automation yet. So we have to do the slight UX um, fail, which is a dummy commit on the cluster Git repository, um, but we'll improve this over time. This is our cluster. Here we can see we've got um, a Helm file, so we know it's our cluster. Um, and again, I apologize, but, but, but we will improve this. Let's do a dummy commit. Um, draw dummy commit to trigger the git sync operator.
Okay, so what's just going to happen is we again we follow the admin log. There we go, it's just started. We've got a new boot job that's actually running in the cluster, so we can follow that. Um, and because it's, uh, it uses actually some uh, requirements uh, from Terraform, so we'll actually automatically now install the uh, Cert Manager chart as well as the external DNS chart. We're going to speed up this video and we'll, um, we'll resume right at the end. Um, this is uh, interesting. I think we called this out in the docs as well, actually. Um, uh, it can, oh, there was a timing issue with Cert Manager at the moment. We're hoping to use this, switch to something called KAP, which does the apply in order, because at the moment in, in, in the cluster, this, um, we don't have this um, admission control that's actually been set up yet. So for now, what it actually does, the boot job actually retries automatically. So it's just a slight tip timing issue that we've got there. Um, again, you move into K app, which is coming in the, one of the next monthly releases. Um, that will improve that, and we'll have be able to install all the resources in the right order. Okay, whilst that carries on applying, let's go ahead and have a look at the status, JX Health uh, status. Because we've got TLS enabled, we will have an automatic health check for TLS. Um, let's check all. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Uh, right, okay, so this is great. Um, we could, there is an error, which is good. I could redo this demo, but actually, maybe this is, let's use this as a good walkthrough. We're using a health status to notify that Cuba Healthy SIP Manager has failed. That's because I've incorrectly added in the email address here. So I've got the at symbol. So we've used the health status to actually verify and report back to what's failing. So this is good practice. Let's spin it that way. And um, let's speed up the demo after we do this, but let's go and fix this first. Now we go to the cluster repo. We go to our requirements for Jenkins X. Let's edit this and let's go down and we can see where I'm missing the at symbol. Okay. Let's fix uh, cert manager. Right, that's going to trigger a second job, which hopefully then will resolve the error from uh, that we're having from cert manager. What we could do is do a watch. Oops. GX on status. Oops. GX, sorry, health status. I'm going to say for all namespaces, let's do a watch as well. Okay, good. This is what this is our error. So at some point, the second boot job pipeline will be will be running, and we'll be able to and, and that check will actually then eventually pass. Okay, um, that's good. So that boot job has now applied the update, concluding the at symbol. Now we can see we're waiting for the certificate issuance um, from a request that we've added. So waiting for a DNS challenge. So this will, uh, we'll have to wait for DNS to propagate and then uh, Let's Encrypt will be able to validate that we own the domain that we've requested the certificate for. And upon successful um, challenge, it will then go and issue a certificate which will be stored in the cluster and which we'll be able to use on all of our ingress rules. So again, this is quite nice. It's almost like we planned the error, but it's quite nice to be able to track the health statuses. This is where we're really seeing a lot of fast improvements around with Jenkins X, um, to be able to get better insight and understanding of where things go wrong. Now, it's not just tied to Jenkins X. This can all be a challenge for you uh, for, and customize yourself. Um, so yeah, we'll just wait for that to, for DNS to propagate and for it to continue.
Okay, we've just seen this actually go to okay. So what we're saying is Cuba Healthy is having reporting a success on the uh, certain amount of TLS. So let's cancel out of that. Um, if we do cube, uh, well, let's actually just go JX. Um, let's go to dash. And here we can see we have our new domain. So the dashboard, the InCluster dashboard is now served up using our new custom domain. And we also have a secure connection using a certificate that's just been issued by, um, uh, by Let's Encrypt. So this is great. Um, so now we have So now we have automated cube CTL get ingress. We now have automated TLS and DNS across all of our applications that are running in the cluster now. So if we have preview environments or we deploy an application through to our staging or different namespaces within the cluster, they will all get be able to reuse the domain and the uh, TLS certificate. So that's great. What we've covered now is automated TLS and DNS. Again, it was an optional, but if you want to have any real workloads, if you want to be able to configure, have um, GitHub or your Git providers talking to your cluster over secure, connect, uh, secure traffic, sending secure traffic, then you are going to need to be able to enable TLS and DNS. All right. Thanks for this uh, guide. Um, any problems, please reach out onto the SAT channels. Next guide is going to be creating a project and using some of the developer workflows, actually, now that we have a working uh, Jenkins X installation. Thank you.